Thank you so much for watching our 912 Social Studies at Home Resources videos. My name is Nicole Desiato, and I'm the Marketing Manager for High School Social Studies at Savas Learning. Today, we'll examine the Black Death, or the bubonic plague, and how it connects to the COVID-19 pandemic. Let's turn back the clock to the 1340s. It is the height of the Middle Ages, and feudalism has dictated the social class and lives of millions of people across Europe. Trade between countries is beginning to expand, and the Christian church is powerful. Let's look at how the Black Plague started, devastated Europe, and changed society. The sight of rats running through your home would be frightening for most of us today. But in the Middle Ages, rats, mice, and other vermin were common, even in the homes of the rich. These rats would eventually spread death across Europe during the Black Plague. The plague was caused by bacteria carried by fleas. The fleas hitched rides on rats, who then scurried into homes and villages across the world. By the mid-1300s, the plague had already wiped out huge numbers of people in China, India, and Mongolia. By 1347, it reached Europe aboard ships landing in Genoa, Italy. It didn't take long for the Black Death to spread throughout Italy, France, and Spain. With no way to stop the spread, it quickly ravaged the rest of Europe, killing millions and creating an upheaval in European society. Fear of the Black Death spread as quickly as the plague itself. People didn't understand why they were falling victim, and they had no way to prevent or cure the disease. The church, which had always been a place to find answers and strength, was also a victim. Priests who cared for the ill and buried the dead soon contracted the deadly bacteria. People began to question why God would punish them with this devastating plague. Many people turned away from the church out of frustration and fear. Life was chaotic as people fled infected towns and cities. Many scared Europeans stayed locked inside for fear they would get the disease if they came into contact with anyone. Some Christians took their anger out on Jewish people, whom they falsely believed had spread the plague through poison. Thousands of Jews were slaughtered during the plague. The plague also had profound effects on the economy of Europe. Peasants were hit particularly hard by the disease. Landowners suddenly found that they didn't have people to tend their farms and take care of their needs. With no workers, production declined for food and other goods and services. Because workers were so hard to come by, those that did survive demanded higher wages. A higher cost of labor meant prices would also rise. So while workers were getting paid more, they also had to spend more in order to buy basic goods. Merchants and landowners tried to pass laws that would keep wages down. These restrictions only angered workers, and there were rebellions in France, Germany, and England as workers fought for more power and rights. By the time the Black Death faded away, one-third of the previous population of Western Europe was dead. The changes and devastation brought an end to the Middle Ages, and Europe began to move into the modern era. Now think about this. Why do you think the plague spread so quickly and widely? Would this be likely to happen in modern times? While we do not have the Black Death and the plague, we know now that we have a global pandemic with the COVID-19 outbreak. During the Middle Ages, the plague began in the East and spread its way through Europe through merchant ships. How did COVID-19 begin and spread in 2020? The World Health... <laughs> While we do not have the Black Death and the plague, we know now that we have a global pandemic with the COVID-19 outbreak. During the Middle Ages, the plague began in the East and spread its way through Europe through merchant ships. How did COVID-19 begin and spread in 2020? The World Health Organization first reported that China was seeing an outbreak of pneumonia cases due to an unknown cause on January 5th, 2020. Let's look at what happened next. The first death reported in China did not come until January 11th. Only 10 days later, there were cases outside of China and the United States reported its first case on January 21st. On January 23rd, China cut all travel to and from Wuhan, a city with 11 million people. A week later, the World Health Organization declared a public health emergency. On January 31st, the U.S. restricted all travel from China to the U.S., but the virus had already begun to spread. Only three weeks later, COVID-19 would begin to hit other areas of the globe, as countries like Italy and Iran saw a major increase in cases. 
the virus will spread from here to African countries like Nigeria and even to Latin America. The first reported death in the U.S. came on February 29th, but officials would later learn that people died of coronavirus in January before testing was being done. In the middle of March, President Trump announced a travel ban from Europe and declared a national emergency in the United States. Schools began to close and states began to go on lockdown. The European Union also banned all non-essential travel. By the end of March, many states are on lockdown, and there's even a travel restriction on non-essential travel from the New York region, one of the hardest hit places in the country. Schools are still closed. Many states would remain closed until the end of April. The country is at a standstill as people desperately try to stop the spread. How have the travel restrictions and closures affected your life? Do you think they helped stop the spread of the virus? In the Middle Ages, the Black Plague spread due to people's travel. Think of the way people traveled in the 1300s and why they moved from place to place. How does it compare to now? Look at how quickly the virus spread from Asia to other continents. What do you think contributed to that? The Black Plague changed the way of life for everyone in Europe. Before the plague, many peasants would work for landowners and had little rights. As we learned, many of these peasants would demand higher wages and more rights as the plague spread across Europe. Since the 1800s, May 1st has been known as International Workers' Day. International Workers' Day, or Labor Day in some parts of the world, is a day to focus on workers' rights. When it was established in the 1800s, workers were protesting for things like their right to an eight-hour workday. On May 1st, 2020, thousands of workers protested due to working conditions during the COVID-19 crisis. Essential workers at hospitals, food stores, online retailers, delivery drivers, workers in factories, and more protested safety regulations during the COVID-19 pandemic. Many workers protesting were looking for protection at work from the coronavirus. They were nervous about bringing the virus home to their families at the end of the workday. Many protesters were asking for paid sick leave, hazard pay, which means getting extra money because of the risk, protective gear against the virus, and cleaning supplies for their place of work. We know now that after the Black Plague, European society drastically changed. What do you think will happen after this pandemic passes? Use your worksheet to make predictions about how this crisis will change our future. Thank you so much for watching our video. We're working hard on more at-home learning videos, so please keep an eye on our social media and websites for more. After today's video, you have the option to send us some feedback via a survey. Please let us know your thoughts and suggestions. Thanks again, and stay safe.